Andrew. And I'm Angus. We're from Cracker Wine today. A very special day here at Cracker. Mm. We've got uh, Andrew. He's got his Lego t-shirt on. But better still, we have some wines from a true global superstar. Yeah, exactly. Marcel Dice. Yeah, exactly. He's probably one of the most exalted of the Alsace producers. So we're talking about Alsace on the border between France and Germany. That's right. And all these France, the Germans like it sometimes, the French like it other times. <laughs> Depends who's at war. We like it all the time. We like it all the time. <laughs> Fair enough. And as you can see by these very lovely pointed bottles on here, we're trying a couple of the regional specialties. And what Marcel Dice does particularly well is the field blend, which basically means it's the absolute, it's, it's the bitter. That's right. of, of the, the wine blend world. That's right. So he puts, so all the different grapes go together. So, you know, normally I was asked the best crews that's just Riesling or just Gewurz, just Pinot Gris. Here he kind of generally blends them all together. Yeah. Also with some other grapes. Chasselas might be in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, A couple yeah. of others. But some stray dogs, maybe. Some stray dogs. Yeah. But, I mean, these wines just are so full of personality. Like, Very much so. They are just, like he's biodynamic. He uses wild yeast, which isn't that special in itself, but he, he lets the he lets the ferments go for a long time. So they're like a year. Like, you know, the great wines yeah. ferment for a year. And I just, I love this stuff. Like, I yeah. really love I mean, it. I definitely do. And, and you can see that the, these are real wines of character. As, as Angus food was wines. Too. Great food, food wines. wines. Interesting, complex, textural, just exactly what you're really looking yeah. for in an interesting white wine. That's I mean, right. They're never going to be super clean. They're always going to have a little bit of, an, ed an edge to them, but at the same time, you know, you're talking about personality. Personality plus. It's like it's like it's like my old girlfriends always had an edge. <laughs> you know, there was always something. There's always something a bit interesting to them. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> so, Pinot Blanc. Pinot Blanc. Let's talk about Pinot Blanc. Okay. Uh, Pinot Blanc. I suppose it's a variety you don't see much of outside of Alsace. Um, probably because of anything else, it's actually a pretty neutral wine. Yep. But it's it's Pinot, so it's it's part of Pinot Noir. Um, a relative Pinot Gris, mm. relative Pinot Noir, the fresher, most lighter style. This mm. has got some great texture to it. Absolutely, yeah. Real oh. richness to it through the mid palate. I could neck this yeah. so easily. Yeah, lovely textural, interesting wine. It's got it's quite a full wine actually. It's about four ten percent alcohol, so there's no no shortage of richness on that palate. But at the same time, it's got some real minerality, some excellent drive, and lots of acidity too, which makes it a, a really interesting and that real. Um, tension there between the richness as well as that acidity makes for a really enjoyable drink. Oh. Now, we were talking before about talking field blends. Talking enjoyable. Yeah, talking enjoyable. And so now, this is probably an example of one of the field blends, Angus. It is indeed. The Berg from 2004. Berg, um, I think it's a limestone-y site. Mm. Six percent Riesling, 40 percent Gewürztraminer. Yeah, yeah. That's 04 as well. So this is... You know, not at this is seven years old. Yeah, exactly. Uh, these wines, though, will live and live and they live do, if you yeah. give them a chance. I mean, again, that, that minerality, that, that acidity behind it says that, hey, yeah, we're never for the long haul. But again, the, the real joy with a wine like this is that it's a fragrance, interesting and complex wine. There's just layers and layers of flavor. You know, you're talking about it just like, wow, there's so much going on in these wines. So much character, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he's not... His wine making, I think a lot of people, a lot of cork dorks would be, well, there's a bit wrong with this, bit of that. Mm. You know, a lot of people don't like Botrytis in their wines because mm. they feel it takes something away. He thinks it's gives something. He doesn't mind a bit of Botrytis in, in his wines. He often lets, leaves them a little sweet, so there isn't that much um, nitrogen in the ferment, so that the ferments don't finish, leaving a bit of sweetness. Some people say, oh, sweetness, that's bad news. Mm. But in these wines, because they're so rich and got texture, they just rock. It just... Yeah. It's still amazing how much acidity is in this wine, too. Yeah. Like, you, you think for something that is so rich. 40 yeah, it's just so rich that it's still got so much drive and so much acidity. Even now, as a seven year old, it's looking very tight to that back end. It just makes it a really enjoyable drink. These are the sort of drinks that, um, when this is all done, these bottles are going to be emptying very quickly. Yes, I think so. In fact, right now. Thank you. Cheers to that. <laughs>